G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Welcome to another episode of Over the Fence. Today we are really privileged to be out at Yering Station in the beautiful Yarra Valley to meet with Willie Lunn, the head winemaker, to talk to him about his unique and interesting approach to precision agriculture that is guaranteeing them higher quality red wines than before. Willie, how are you? Good Tim, how are you? Not too bad, mate. Excellent. Not too bad. Thanks very much for having us out here. I really appreciate it. No worries. No, um, happy to be here. We're really excited to learn about your approach to precision agriculture. It's helping you find quality gains in your Pinot production and improve the value of your product. Absolutely. Um, and it's a really innovative practice that you have. So uh, do you mind if we hop over the fence? Come and on. Come and have a look at what you're doing. Come and have a look over here. Well, welcome to Yering Station. In the last sort of 10 years, we've been uh, forced to replant all of these vineyards. So this is an e the original planted uh, Pinot Noir block. This was planted in 83, I think, on their own roots. We we're gonna have to pull all of this out over the next, you know, all of the vineyards over the next few years. In order to replant on rootstock, we want to get uh, the right clone on the right rootstock, on the right site, on the right aspect, the right slope. So we're trying to do the best that we can. By doing precision viticulture, we're hoping that we can utilise some science to drive forward um, our knowledge of, of each particular site. So what you're doing, Willie, is you're using precision ag, um, you're using NDVI, uh, images of the block, which is, is an ultraviolet yep. uh, radiation index. You're flying drones over the block, seeing what the plants are doing, seeing what the leaves are doing during yep. periods of the season. And you've used ground scanning radar yep. to establish what's going, in in the, going on in the soil. And mm. what you're aiming to do, if I'm correct, is you're aiming to match the growth, growth characteristics of certain varieties of vines with certain soils, yep. according to that imagery. Correct. Is that correct? So, over this vineyard, we know which are the, the um, highest quality blocks. So now we're trying to quantify what we can taste. Yeah, so you walk okay. through the vineyard and you eat grapes and they'll tell you where the sweet spots are. So by understanding what those sweet spots are, if there are other sweet spots, we want to be planting those to the same variety. So down here where we've got more fertile soil, you know, down at the bottom of this slope, we get better um, uh, the vines do better here than they would up the very top. And you're pinpointing exactly where it is that those boundaries are in the types of soil with, with this precision ag. That's technology. what we're trying to do, absolutely. Now you've got some maps that we'd love to have a look at um, that demonstrate exactly how this imagery can be used. Yeah. Yeah. So can we have a look at those, Absolutely. Mate? So here you've got ground penetrating radar and these images really are, are telling us how deep the topsoil is, uh, how hard it is to the, the clay level, whether it's um, uh, you know sodic or salty soil or whether it's free draining. So we can use these different images which will map essentially the soil profile. Then when you look at here, these are infrared taken at, um, uh, at Verizon, so just as the vines are ripening. And this indicates uh, leaf area or leaf density. Um, that area here where we're standing, we're just standing down here, that area there is more, uh, you know, there's skinnier soil through here, which is indicating less vigor in here. Here, where the soil is slightly deeper, is indicating in this area through here. So what you're saying, Willie, is that you want to plant Pinot where it's really vigorous. Yeah, Pinot, Pinot hates uh, stress. Pinot it loves hates deep stress. soil, so loves water, loves, like, loves green leaves. So if you had Pinot planted here, which you do at the moment, yeah. you're going to get a lower quality crop no matter how much wizardry and how much emphasis and how much effort you put into growing that. Yeah. The reality is your shallower soils, your, your sort of skinny soils, your low vigor soils are not going to support Pinot to grow to high value. Not as well, no, exactly. So we're trying to look at our best blocks, understand um, not only just the aspect and the, and, the, uh, and the slope of the block, we're understanding how deep the soil is, how much vigour we can get and plant the varieties that are best suited to those particular blocks. 
Now these images here, Willie, they are a little limited in that they'll tell you how deep the soil is, they'll tell you if there's salt in the soil and things like that, but they're not going to tell you soil type. And once again, they'll tell you that the, the vines are not doing as well here, but they're not going to tell you why, and they're not going to tell you um, the extent to which the vines are not doing well. So you have to calibrate that with a lot of good old fashioned um, techniques. Just dig a hole and look at the, uh, look at the actual different soils that you have. What we're trying to do is, um, you know, over time, the French have, uh, as using the French as an example, when they had a really uh, sweet spot in a vineyard, they put a little rock wall around it. And that might have taken, you know, 100, 200 years to work that all out. We're trying to understand our best blocks, why they are, and then utilize this information to be replanting so that we can kind of do it in a lifetime. So what you're trying to do is using this modern technology, you're accelerating what took several hundred years in French wine growing and do that in a few years. Yeah. And it really, these maps are a really good indication to tell you where to go and look and where to go and taste. Absolutely. Um, you don't change aspect. You don't mm. change soil type. Um, you can ameliorate the soil a little bit, but the main, you know, how free draining it is, how deep it is, uh, whether it's north or, uh, or east or west facing, that's, you know, that's what, set. What, that's you set. don't change that And you've got all. to work with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So by identifying those values in both in the soil and in the vines as they're growing through the year, you can then go and investigate further, decide what varieties to plant where and get a really good quality crop. Well, we're, overall we're trying to increase the quality uh, yeah. of our um, of grape production, which will increase our uh, quality of wine so it um, you know we're striving to make but grow better grapes and make better wine all the time now there's a really good story that's a long-term plan that you have for replanting and mm -hmm. you're replanting because the Yarra Valley got phylloxera anyway so it's a good time to to add value to to what you have to do anyway yeah um, but there was a really good short-term gain in doing this ground scanning radar and NDVI as well. Um, Nathan Scarlett, your vigneron, yep. um, pioneered this mm -hmm. and ended up with your highest quality, highest priced wine named after him. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah, well, um, Nathan, who was doing his uh, PhD in viticulture mm -hmm. and um, really great bloke, you know, he and I got on very well. For me as a farmer, you know, having someone with a with a similar passion, but you know, the acumen to uh, to quantify what we can taste is unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, Nathan <coughs> uh, succumbed to um, uh, cancer, and uh, in honour of his uh, work and and his legacy, we named our uh, uh, single vineyard, single block Pinot that we've only made three times in honour of Nathan. So. Uh, the, uh, now, his work was amazing. Now in that, in the making of that wine, his groundbreaking use of technology is, is still used. Um, he managed to identify in this one block that there were in fact two or three different grades of fruit in how the vines were behaving during vintage. Yeah. So rather than doing the traditional thing of just picking every row yeah. all on the same day, you'll actually now come and go, well, this is wine. This is vine 67 in this block. This is the borderline of the good soil and the bad soil. This is the borderline of the vigor and the non-vigor. Yeah. So you'll actually pick this vine on a different day to this vine, and all the vines above it. Is that correct? Well, very close. The um, we'll pick sections, but ultimately one day I'd love to know the uh, you know the personality of each vine. Mm. Would be awesome. And so all of that technology is helping you to accelerate that process and know what you're dealing with a lot quicker. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Willie, thank you very much for Tim, your time in the vineyard today. Thanks very much. It's been awesome to learn all about what you're doing and it's been awesome to learn about how you're using technology to improve quality um, and also the limits of technology and how you still have to taste stuff and you still have to know what's going yeah. on and get out there and dig a hole. Absolutely. All right, thank no, you very much. Thanks, mate. Tim. Cheers. Mm -hmm.